Hi there everyone, my name is Christian Eschbach and welcome to another one of my album reviews. If you're one of my regular viewers, you know I've been doing a whole load of just different Metallica stuff. Started off with Kirk Hammett's brand new 2022 solo EP Portals, Cherry. From there I moved on to a collection of singles. After that went on to a collection of bootlegs. And now I'm going on to the most controversial and definitely most disliked album in Metallica's entire repertoire. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to talk about Lulu. All right, Lulu. Lou Reed. And no, that's not why it's called Lulu. Lou Reed and Metallica. Doing a concept album. Now, when I originally heard this information, I was all like, Ooh, this is going to be really cool. This is going to be fun. This is going to be great. This is going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to this. And then I picked up the album. and whoo. So let's go into some background on this one, all right? I'm just going to read this off of a particular website that you can go uh, wiki. Lulu is a collaboration album between rock singer-songwriter Lou Reed and heavy metal band Metallica. It was released as a double album on October 31st, 2011 by Warner Brothers in the U.S. and Vertigo elsewhere. The album is the full, final-length studio recording project that Lou Reed was involved in before his death on October 13th of the same year. So he died, unfortunately, before the album came out. Uh, it was recorded in San Rafael, California during April to June 2011. After Reed had played with Metallica at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, for the 25th anniversary concert, which led to them wanting to collaborate. Okay, uh, then goes on. Okay, so, uh, conceptually, the album is based on the two Lulu plays by German playwright Frank Windekind. I'm gonna go into that in a second. The majority of the composition is centered on spoken word delivered by Reed over instrumentals composed by Metallica, with occasional backing vocals provided by Metallica lead vocalist James Hetfield. Reed wrote the majority of the lyrics. The album was released worldwide on October 31st, 2011 and November 1st in North America. Upon its release, Lulu received mixed reviews, blah, blah, blah. All right. So, Frank Wittekind, for full name, Benjamin Franklin Wittekind. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Born July 24th, 1964th, and died March 9th, 1918. The Lulu Cycle, as it's called, or the Lulu Play, uh, the Lulu Plays, sorry, um, I'm going to use the English names, Earth Spirit, which was in 1895, and Pandora's Box, which was in 1904, because my German sucks were probably his best-known works until the 2006 adaptation of Spring Awakening. Originally conceived as a single play, the two pieces tell a continuous story of sexually enticing young of a sexually enticing young dancer who rises in German society through her relationships with wealthy men but who later falls into poverty and prostitution. The frank depiction of sexuality and violence in these plays, including lesbianism and an encounter with Jack the Ripper, a role which Windekind played in the original production, pushed the boundaries of what was considered acceptable on the stage at the time. All right. Yeah, okay, so that tells you everything you need to know about this. So this, th this pushes what's acceptable. All right. Basically, long story short, Lou Reed had a bunch of stuff he was hoping to get Metallica to work with him on to rework some old stuff, see if he could get it out there whatnot. They came across the transcripts and the demos he had done for a play, uh, or for his own musical concept adaptation of the play Lulu. So that's what this is, basically. Now, it's busted up into two CDs, six tracks on one, four on the other. And part of the reason for that is on the 
second CD, two of the tracks get a little lengthy. Uh, the album opens up with Brandenburg Gate. And Brandenburg Gate, for anybody that picks this up right away, is going to screw with everybody, okay? And the reason why is you don't hear Lou Reed singing or any type of melodic presentation or anything like that. You hear this rough, crotchety, old man-sounding voice come out and say, I would cut my legs and tits off when I think of Boris Karloff and Kinski in the dark of the moon. All right. Right there, everybody's like, what the f Okay, and that set it up from there. Metallica released one single, which was the second song, The View. Now, basically, the whole thing is Lou Reed performing, for the most part, I'll get into this as I go through each individual song, but it's basically Lou Reed performing spoken word. It's not singing, I mean, we're talking proper spoken word, and Metallica is providing an accompaniment. Some songs, it works really well. Some songs, it doesn't. Overall, the whole entire story... <sighs> this is a listening album, okay? I personally just finished listening to the album right before I recorded this. I listen to this album. I like to go back and give it a listen once every couple years. And just to see if my opinion changes at all. Now, when this album first came out, wow, man, was I so disappointed and so pissed off. The thing is, I was putting it in wanting to listen to a real good rock album. You know, a hard rock collaboration with Lou Reed. You know, that's what I was expecting. Something that sounds, you know... Now, to be honest, my Lou Reed knowledge is a little so-so, okay? And Lou Reed, with what I do know, never been the greatest of vocalists, I would say. But there are certain things that on here just really didn't work. And when he does sing, I do enjoy it. When he's doing the spoken word, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Like Brandenburg Gate, nice kind of slow lead-in, gets you going, kind of sets you up for what it's going to be. Uh, but that's kind of where it ends. Uh, there's not much about Brandenburg Gate that I really would say is positive or I'd want to talk about. After that, we get to The View. The View... The View is the single that was released, and I don't quite understand why. I'm not... Once again, it, it keeps the story going. And if you're listening to the album, I mean, actually sitting there listening to the album, it's it's a cool track to listen to, but you really got to be listening. You also have to be very open-minded with this album, too. Let me be very clear. Very open-minded. Uh, now, when you get to Pumping Blood, um, based on the lyrics that are in there and the way the story is being told and whatnot, to me, Pumping Blood is basically what you could assume is the Jack the Ripper part of the story, where she comes into contact with Jack the Ripper. And I do. there's parts of Pumping Blood I really like. The music suits the words that are being spoken or sung. Because, you know, there there is a little bit more melodic presentation to the vocals on this one. And it kind of works long as you're once again got an open mind and you're not trying to picture Metallica doing this Metallica kind of album, you know? Mistress Dread, I hate. One of the few songs on this album, I will flat out say I do not like it. Mistress Dread is one of the things that totally kind of starts killing this album. After that, we get into Iced Honey. Now, Iced Honey is... Brandenburg Gate is the shortest song on the first album. Iced Honey is the second shortest song. I like Iced Honey. I think Iced Honey would actually be really good if it had a different vocalist on it. I personally would love to take a crack, even, you know, if, you know, get my band back together and whatnot. I'd love to take a crack at Iced Honey because I really think the song had some really good potential... And what you hear on this album sounds more like a demo version of it than what the album or the song itself could have been. I really think Iced Honey had potential. If it had been done up a little better, I think Iced Honey had the potential to be the actual single for this one. It should have been the single for this one. 
I definitely should have been the single before The View, as far as I'm concerned. And then you get into Cheat On Me. Uh, Cheat On Me, longest song on the first album, first disc. Clocks in at 11 minutes, 24 seconds. And I really do dig it. The problem with the song is if you're not in the right headspace, it's way too long. Way too long and way too repetitive. If you're in the right headspace and you're listening to this song, this album, as it's meant to be or to give it a good vibe, Cheat On Me really, really works. The downside is if you got a single disc CD player, if you listen to the vinyl, you got to go and change it for the next, uh, the next disc, which kind of sucks. When you can actually have the CDs, you know, go one literally into the other, you definitely get a much better effect going into the second album because Cheat On Me kind of has a vibe and a flow to it that really just kind of feels like it's carried on in the next album. Which brings us to the next song that I absolutely detest on this album, which is Frustration. Uh, Mistress Dread and Frustration, the two reasons why I can't stand these songs, is the music and the words. I don't feel they line up well. I feel they line up really, really poorly. And it feels like kind of Lou Reed had recorded the vocals and then listened to Metallica outtakes and went... Oh, well, let's do this. And oh, let's do that. And oh, let's do this. And oh, let's do that. That's really what it vibed like for me. And I really, for both of those songs. And both of those songs really kind of kill this album a lot more than you'd believe. If you took out those two songs, I really think the album would come back to life a little bit more. Because even when you get into the next song, Little Dog... So we're now at the second track on the second disc. Little Dog is, you know. Uh, Little Dog is a really weird kind of vibe song. But it works. Even at eight minutes long, it really still kind of works. And it works a lot better than Frustration does. Part of the reason is the music actually sounds right. And it actually flows and vibes properly. And just kind of... It works for me. You know, I, I actually enjoy it. Then you get to Dragon, which is the next track. This one, now, the first two tracks, uh, Frustration's eight and a half minutes. Little Dog is eight minutes. Little Dog does not feel as long as Frustration does. And I really, once again, I don't like Frustration. Dragon is clocking in at 11 minutes and eight seconds. And I'm digging on this one a little bit. Not a lot. The music's really good. The words, lyrics, vocals, etc. They're not bad. They're not great. Now, the last track on this whole thing, which is called Junior Dad. Not much to it lyrically. Very much more of an instrumental track. And I actually... Okay, so this song clocks in at 19 minutes and 26 seconds. And the last two minutes of it feels like it's dragging on maybe a tad bit. But there is... The, the idea is after this woman's gone through this whole life of blah, 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 blah. There's uh, a kid that comes out of this whole package, you know, uh, presents the kid to the father, I believe is what I'm getting out of that. And... It's kind of finding everything all right with the world, finding everything okay with the world. You know, it's like when you're watching one of those movies, you know, I, I did not do what just happened behind me on purpose. It actually works well with it. Um, if I can get it to do it again. Eh? Uh, so the idea is, you know, like even right now, I was just all, I'm all grayed out and a second ago it was all nice and warm and bright. Now, if you did that in reverse, so it was like all grayed out like it is right now, kind of, and then all warm and blah, blah, blah. That's kind of what Junior Dad feels like. It kind of feels like going from that gray into, the, yeah, like that. Just like that. It warms up and it's spectacular, you know. Uh, except for when I'm doing it here, it's lasting for seconds, and, you know, this song, it lasts basically for almost 20 minutes. I like long songs, and I like long songs that have a vibe to them, a flow to them, a feeling, something you can really kind of enjoy with it, and Junior Dad works for me that way.
especially as an instrumental, because it's predominantly an instrumental. There's a little lyric to it, but not a lot. The whole way around, I do honestly enjoy this album if I view it as an artistic piece of work, okay? I cannot view this album as a Metallica album. When I try and view it as a Metallica album, no. No, 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 no. Uh, when I view it as a Metallica album, I'd really like Metallica to redo Iced Honey. And that's it. <laughs> Maybe cut and trim some of the songs and whatnot, but Iced Honey is about the only song I, I really view as a Metallica kind of song. And even then, it, it's not... Really, Metallica's contributions to this really kind of... A lot of the songs feel like it's just them jamming around, fucking around. Not really... They're not trying to compose an album. They're not trying to compose a great album. They're, they're, they're the hired guns for Lou Reed on this one. And they're going for a sound and a vibe that definitely is very much kind of a Lou Reed artsy kind of vibe. And they accomplish it. And as Lou Reed's last album, <sighs> 10 years later, I think it deserves another replay from everybody. But, but, all right, now, I do not condone the use of illicit substances. But the best listening I have ever had with this particular album involved... Some fresh powder, a super hot chick wearing a fishnet bodysuit, and only a fishnet bodysuit, dancing for me privately in my living room, which was lit up by a bunch of cool, I want to call them soft bar lights. Um, you know, like they were spinning some nice, pretty soft colors, why not? Really gave it a great vibe. Now, can you enjoy this without the illicit substances and the sexy woman dancing in front of you? Absolutely. But I highly recommend putting on the lights, smoking a bowl, because in Canada that is completely legal across the country, um, and having a good time and just enjoy the album. Listen to the album, okay? And that you, you'll, you'll see something different. This is definitely an album that time has been needed for. To move away from the idea that it was a Metallica album. Uh, once again, not a Metallica album. Lou Reed album featuring Metallica. Alright, so I'm going to just end it here. Uh, let me know what you think. I know people hate this album. Go ahead. You can blast away if you hate it. If you actually like this album, tell me what you think. I'm, I'm more curious about the people that might actually like this album. Or if there are certain songs they, that they do like. I mean, like I said, myself... Ice Honey, Cheat On Me, and Junior Dad are both pretty good. Or all three of them, I, I think, are pretty good. The other ones, it's hit and miss. You gotta be artsy, I think. Um, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. There's a link below for Patreon. Peace. Love. Take care.